All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to take a look at slope intercept form, but specifically we're going to look at how the change in the slope or the m value will actually change the graph of the equation. Let's go ahead and take a look at our first example here. So we have slope intercept form y equals mx plus b. In order to keep everything else the same, we want to make sure that we're just looking at the slope or the m value. So we're going to keep the b value or the y-intercept at 0. Now, if you watched the previous video on the y-intercept, you know that anytime it's equal to 0, that means that that line will cross the origin or cross the y-axis at the origin. So our first one, we're going to start out with a slope of 1. Just go ahead and plug in the values for x. We're going to start out and make x's value uh, 0 and solve here. So we write our equation with the value of x equaling 0. y equals 1 times 0 plus 0. And when we do 1 times 0, we get 0 again. So our y value would be 0. And I go ahead and plug that in over here. Now I need to come up with another value. Now I've had students in the past that have asked, well, how do you know what values to use for x? And we're just using values that work very well in that equation or that are easy to use. So the next one I'm going to use is 1. And if I plug that into the equation, I would have 1 times 1 plus 0. 1 times 1 is 1, and when we add 0, we know our value for y then is 1. And then I move on to my next one, 2. 2 times 1, so I just plug the value of 2 in for x. 1 times 2 is 2, and you're adding 0, so it's kind of like you're keeping it the same, the identity property of addition. So y is equal to 2. And next I might even try 3. Or maybe some of you want to try negative numbers. That's okay too. But I'm just going to plug the 3 in. 1 times 3 is 3. And when I add 0 to that, I still have that value of 3, thanks to my identity property of addition. Now I'm ready to graph. So I'm going to move over to my graph here. And I'm going to graph 0, 0. And then I'm going to graph 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. And you can see that these points are kind of following a pattern. The value of x is always going to equal the value of y with this particular equation. So I can just go where my values match up. And now I'm going to make my line for this uh, graph here. So we're going to connect the dots all the way up to here. And I can go ahead and draw the arrows on the end of that graph. So this is our first one, y equals 1x plus 0. Let's go ahead and move on to our next one. Now we have y equals 2x plus 0. And I'm going to start off again in x value of 0. So when I put 0 in for x, 2 times 0 is equal to 0. And then I'm adding 0 again. So it's just going to be 0. Then I might try the value 1 for x. And again, I'm going to replace that x with that value, 2 times 1. And I get 2 as my y value. And I'll continue on. This next time, I'm going to try the x value of 2. And when I plug that in, 2 times 2 is 4. And now I'm going to try the value. I could even go up higher if I wanted. Maybe I want to go all the way up to um, 6 for the x value. And I'm just going to plug a 6 in here. And I know 2 times 6 is 12, plus 0 is 12. Now I can graph my points. 0, 0 again, the origin. 
1 comma 2 2 comma 4 is another point and then I went all the way up to 6 12 which works out really nicely on this graph and I can connect those with a line if I wanted I could even figure out what negative 6 would be for the x value and negative 6 times 2 is negative 12 so it kinda gives me uh, some points that are a little bit farther away and it helps me to graph it more accurately with a little bit longer line and now I'm gonna go ahead and put my arrowheads on those lines and there we have our next graph let's do the next one now we're gonna look at when we have a slope of four so so far we've done a slope of one we've done a slope of two now we're doing a slope of four so I'm gonna bust out my pink pen here and I'm gonna put in a value of zero for X when I solve four times zero is zero and I'm gonna try one one times four is four two times four is eight and I could even try a three here three times four is twelve now graph the points so I put my dot at the origin then I go over one and up four then I go over two and up eight Then I go over three and up twelve and if I wanted again I could throw a negative number in like negative three for X well negative three times four is a negative 12 remember a negative times a positive equals a negative and when we make our line for this one I'm just going to connect the dots and add my arrowheads to the end and we move on to our next one now we have a slope that's less than one so when we see this one half as our slope we're going to change up our values for x i'm still going to start with zero and i know that y is going to equal zero because that's what the y-intercept is and i could solve the equation but if i want to solve this one i'm going to use a number that works well for x one half times two well half of two is one and then I'm gonna try another number like four half of four is two so the y value is two and finally my next number I'm gonna pick for x I'm gonna pick a, a little bit larger one like 10 or even 12 I'm gonna go with 12 okay and I know that half of 12 is six so these numbers are going to work a little bit better than if I just used 1, 2, 3 because 3 then we'd have to have a decimal value of 1.5 for y and that just makes things complicated. I'm going to graph these points. I still have that 0, 0 at the origin. Now I've got 2, comma 1 so that's going to be right about here Then I'm over 4 and up 2 and that last one I did, I'm going all the way over 12 and up 6. Again, you could even put in a negative value like negative 12. Well, half of negative 12 is negative 6. And I connect my lines once again with a straight edge and add my little arrowheads to the end. So now we can see as it went less than 1, notice how it changed from the yellow line where our slope was 1 to the blue line where our slope is 1 half. And you should start to recognize a pattern what's going on as, as the numbers get higher or greater than 1 and as the numbers get less than 1 for our slope. And for this particular video, we're keeping our slope a positive value. We'll do another one on negative values tomorrow. So here we have our next one. And it says one-fifth as the slope. One-fifth x. So again, for my x, I'm going to start out with 0. And I know 0 times anything is equal to 0. So my y-coordinate will be 0. 
Then, instead of doing 1 times 1 fifth, I'm going to use a number that works well with 1 fifth, which is 5. 1 fifth of 5 is 1. And the next value I'm going to use for my x is 10, because 1 fifth of 10 is 2. And I might even throw in a negative 10, which is no different from this first one, other than instead of 2, it will actually be a negative 2 for the y value. And I can plot these points, 0, comma, 0. I'm going to go ahead and skip to 10, comma, 2, and come right here. And negative 10, negative 2. And we're going to use our straight edge connect the dots here and put the arrowheads on our graph in orange and there we have it so now when we take a look at these graphs we can see the light blue and the orange and how they are a slope of less than one and notice how they are kind of slanted differently and then notice the green and pink lines that go more in an upward direction or downward, depending on how you're looking at it. And their slope is greater than 1. So I want you to think about this. What did you notice happened to the graph as the value of the slope changed? When m got higher, what happened? And then again, what happened when m or the slope became less than 1? Well, I hope that helped you better understand how slope affects the graph of a line. See ya!